these are problems coming from chapter 4, beginning with number 13. A population has a mean equal to 30 and a standard deviation equal to 5. If 5 points were added to every score in the population, what would be the new values for the mean and standard deviation? So given the rules that were presented previously, we recognize that if we are adding 5 points, a constant, to every score, we should see the same effect on the mean. And again, given our rules, the rules of scaling say the new mean will equal the original mean and then whatever we did with the constant, so plus 5 points. So therefore the new mean equals the original, which was 30, plus 5 equals a new mean of 35. Now let's assess the effects on the standard deviation. Our rules say that the standard deviation nu will equal the original when we add or subtract a constant. So again, no effect on the standard deviation variability of the scores in the distribution when we add or subtract a constant. So here we're adding a constant, therefore the new standard deviation will equal the original, original and the original was equal to 5. Okay, so again stressing that when you add and subtract a constant, the mean will inevitably change because the sum of x will change, um, but the spacing or difference or deviation spread between scores will not be affected when you add or subtract a constant and therefore the standard deviation will not change. The next example, if every score in a population were multiplied, multiplied by 3, what would be the new mean and standard deviation? So again, our rules of scaling say that the new will equal the original multiplied by 3. Therefore the new mean is equal to the original, which was 30, multiplied by what we did with all scores, 3, and so the new mean is equal to 90. And then, different from what we saw in 13a, when we multiply or divide by a constant, the variability, deviation, difference, or spread between scores does change, because when you multiply, the difference between the scores increases significantly. So if we consider the effects on the standard deviation, the rule says the new standard deviation will equal the original multiplied by the constant. So in this case, the new is equal to the original, which was 5 multiplied by 3 is equal to 15. Okay, so again, stressing when you add and subtract a constant, no change on variability, but definitely change on the mean. When you multiply and divide, we, we see an effect on the mean and the standard deviation. For the next example, number 15, the following sample of four scores, 82, 88, 82, and 86, um, must be considered to do the following. Simplify the arithmetic by first subtracting 80 points from each score to obtain a new sample of 2, 8, 2, and 6. So all we've done is created a new distribution by subtracting 80 points. So you can think of that as applying a constant, subtracting a constant from all the scores. Then compute the mean and the standard deviation for the new sample. All right, so I'm just going to set up my scores here of 2, 8, 2, and 6. And I know to calculate the mean, I need to take the sum of my x values. So if I add... 2 and 8, 10 plus 2, 12 plus 6 equals 18. And then I need to calculate um, how many scores, or actually divide by how many scores to get the mean. So the mean, the mean is equal to the sum of x over n. Sum of x is equal to 18. I have four scores. And so my mean is 18 divided by 4, which gives me 4.5. Okay, next um, we're asked to calculate the standard deviation of the new distribution. 
I'm going to use the computational formula with S, uh, of SS, which is the first step of calculating standard deviation. SS is equal to the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. And I'm going to replace variables, things I already know, which is equal to, I know the sum of x is equal to 18. I'm going to square that. I have four scores, and so now what I'm left with finding out is what is the sum of all scores that have been squared. So x squared is equal to 4. 8 squared, 64. 2 squared, 4. And 6 squared, 16. And so now I can take the sum of all scores that have been squared and if I take the summation, um, it should be 108. So 108 minus 18 squared divided by 4. So let me rewrite that here. So 108, so 18 squared divided by 4 is equal to 81. So we have 108 minus 81 is equal to 27. Okay, next we need to calculate the variance of the sample. Variance is equal to SS, the sum of squared deviations, over N minus 1, or degrees of freedom. We replace variables. Um, SS, sum of squared deviations, is equal to 27. N minus 1 is equal to 3, so my variance is equal to 9. Again, the variance represents the average of squared deviations. And then finally, to calculate my standard deviation, standard deviation is equal to the square root of my variance. And if we take the square root of 9, we get a standard deviation equal to 3. Um, before I proceed, let me go back and uh, emphasize this process of dividing by degrees of freedom, or n minus 1. Again, from our reading, we learned that in order for a sample statistic to be equal to the population parameter in terms of var variability, variance in particular, we must um, implement a mathematical correction to increase the variability. So we divide by a smaller number to increase the variance so that it's a better reflection of the population variability. Population variability will always be larger than sam sample variability and therefore we need to make this statistic unbiased by dividing the um, quotient by a smaller value, so 27 divided by 3 versus 27 divided by 4. And then, um, again, finally, standard deviation represents the average difference between the scores in a distribution and the mean of the distribution. So our mean was 4.5, and now what we're saying is that on average, um, the scores in our distribution deviate from the mean of the distribution by three points. So again, standard deviation represents the average difference between the scores in the distribution and the mean of that distribution. And the standard deviation helps us assess how well the mean represents all the scores in the distribution. All right, in this next section, again, we're um, applying the scaling rules and working slightly backwards given the fact that we started with this distribution up here and then changed it into this distribution by subtracting a constant. So let's consider what the um, mean of the original distribution was um, given what we were working with and how we changed the distribution. Okay, so if we consider what we did in the original part, of 15, um, and we consider our, our scaling rules, the new mean is equal to the original mean minus 80. 
Okay, because we subtracted 80 points from every score to get the new mean. So we, we calculated the new mean, and that was equal to 4.5. So we want to find out what the original mean was equal to. And so we replace variables, and now we can see that if we use simple algebra, and again, we saw for the, new, the original mean, we would conclude that the original mean, so of course we would add 80 here, add 80 here, and so 84.5 is equal to the original, original mean. And if we were to add um, 82 plus 88 plus 82 plus 86, which is the original distribution, divide by 4, we will get 84.5. But again, we don't necessarily need to do that. All we need to do is rely on our scaling rules. Okay, so standard deviation says the new standard deviation is equal to the original. Okay, so the new, based on our calculations in 15a, that the new standard deviation is equal to 3, and therefore the original is equal to 3 because, again, the spacing between scores didn't, was not affected by subtracting a constant. Okay, number 17. For the data in the following sample, um, we have our x values of 8, 1, 5, 1, and 5. We're asked to calculate the mean and the standard deviation to begin. So here is the data. So we have a score of 8, 1, 5, 1, and 5. And we need to calculate the mean of our distribution. So we're going to need the sum of x. Again, the mean is equal to the sum of x over n. We know what n is equal to. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 scores. And now we need to calculate what the sum of x is equal to, and so if we calculate all our x values, take the summation, excuse me, um, we should get 20. So 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. Next, now we need to calculate the standard deviation, and again I'm going to use the computational formula for SS, the sum of squared deviations, which is the first step in calculating standard deviation. The sum of squared deviations using the computational formula is equal to the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. So I'm just going to replace variables here and in the parentheses I know what the sum of x is equal to and the sum of x is equal to 20 And then that is going to be divided by n, which in this case is equal to 5. And we're going to square that, square the sum of x. And what's missing is the sum of squared x values. So I'm going to come over here and square all my x values. Get 64, 1, 25, 1, and 25. And now take the sum of all x values that have been squared and I get a summation equal to 116. So 116. So our sum of squared deviations is equal to 116 minus 20 squared divided by 5, which is equal to 80. So 116 minus 80 is 36. Next, we need to, so we've calculated sum of squared deviations. Now that leads us right into calculating the variance, the average squared um, deviation. And that's calculated by taking the sum of squared deviations over n minus 1, or degrees of freedom. So if I replace variables, sum of squared deviations is equal to 36. And we had 5 scores, so 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. And we get 36 divided by 4 is equal to 9. And then finally, we want to bring the representation of variability back into its original units. To do so, I would take the variance and take the square root of 
that value to represent the average um, deviation between scores. So the variance is equal to the square root, oops, excuse me, let me backtrack just a second here. The variance, standard deviation is equal to the square root of my variance. So standard deviation is equal to the square root of 9, which in this case is equal to 3. So now we've calculated the mean and the standard deviation of our distribution. Okay, so part B says, now let's consider changing one of the x values to new value. In fact, we're going to change x equals, to 8, x equals 8 to x equals 18. So to solve that, I'm going to go ahead and clear all of this and start over. Um, so again, our new distribution looks like this. So again, we're just changing one score, but that's going to have an effect on the sum of scores and the sum of squared scores. So let's start over. So instead of 8, 8 becomes 18. And the rest of the values remain the same. So again, note that we're not applying a constant here. We're just saying we're changing one value. So if we want to calculate the new mean, that's the sum of x over n. We're still working with five scores, but now the sum of x will have changed because we changed one value from 8 to 18. And the new mean, excuse me, the new sum of x is equal to 30. So 30 divided by 5, and we get 6. So we notice that in the previous example, our mean was equal to 4. So obviously, if we increase the score of 8 to 18, we should expect an increase in the mean because the sum of our x values has increased. Next, we're asked to compute the standard deviation. Again, beginning with SS using the computational process is equal to the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. I'm going to replace variables, things that I already know. The sum of x of my new distribution is equal to 30. We're going to square that. We're still working with five scores. And so the thing that's missing, the variable that's missing, is the sum of all x values that have been squared. So let's go over here and complete that. So if we take 18 and we square it, we should get 324. 1 squared is 1. 5 squared, 25. 1 and 25. And so in your calculators, add the sum of um, values that have been squared. So we get, let's see here, 324 plus 1 plus 25 plus 1 plus 25, and that's equal to the sum of x squared, 376. So let's replace that, 376. All right, so the sum of squared deviations using the computational formula is equal to 376 minus 30 squared divided by 5. So that's the same as saying 376 minus 180 is equal to 196. Okay, so again, 30 squared divided by 5 gave us the 180. We subtract it from the sum of squared of sum of x values that have been squared, which was equal to 376, and we get 196, just to confirm. Now our variance is equal to the sum of squared deviations over n minus 1. Again, n minus 1 is the process we engage in to ensure that our sample statistic is unbiased. So we get the sum of squared deviations is equal to 196 divided by 4. So in your calculator, 196 divided by 4 gives us 49. 
Again, variance represents the average of squared deviations. And then finally, to bring it back into its original units, we take the square root of our sample variance. So the square root of 49 gives us 7. So our original distribution had a standard deviation equal to 3. So um, in addressing 17c, we recognize that changing one score to an extreme score has an influence on the mean. It increased the mean and significantly increased the variability. Um, so again, recognizing the effects of one extreme score on the mean, mean as we learned in the last chapter, is adversely affected by extreme scores. But also in this case, with one extreme score, the variability is is increased significantly, making us believe that the scores aren't very similar to one another. But if we come over here to our distribution, we see that there isn't a huge difference between these scores. But adding that one extreme increases the variability significantly. All right, number 19. Calculate sum of squared deviations variance. Excuse the typo. Let's see here. The variance. and standard deviation for the following population of scores. I want to point out that please, please pay, pay attention when um, you're working with a population versus a sample. As we noted in the previous examples, when we were working with um, sample statistics, the variance is calculated slightly different. We need to make those statistics unbiased by dividing by n minus 1, or d degrees of freedom. We don't need to do that with population parameters um, because the variance that is calculated is the true variability um, of the distribution. So make sure that you pay attention to whether or not you're working with a population or a sample. All right, well, I'm going to take my x values and list them here. So I have 0 and 0, 5, 0, 3, 0, 0 and 4. And even though I'm not asked to, to calculate the mean, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the mean. The mean is equal to the sum of x over n. So if I take the sum of my x values, it's kind of an odd distribution, but 7 plus 5 is 12, and I have 8 scores. So 12 divided by 8 Let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Gives me a mean of 1.5. 1.5. All right, next um, we're asked to calculate SS, the sum of squared deviations. And I do favor the computational formula because it's, it's faster, it's easier. But you should know the distinction between the two and know how to apply both. So the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. Again, as usual, I'm going to replace variables. What do I already know? The sum of x, given my mean calculation, is equal to 12. I have 8 scores. And um, what's missing? The sum of x values that have been squared. So 0, 0, 25, 0. 9, 0, 0, 16. So if I take the sum of x values that have been squared, 25 plus 9 plus 16 gives me 50. Okay, so if I take 12 and I square it and divide by 8, I get 18. So SS, sum of squared deviations, is equal to 50 minus 18, which is equal to 32. Next, I need to calculate um, the variance. So variance of a population is equal to SS over N, not N minus 1, N. So 32 over 8 is equal to 4. And then finally, and again, the reason we don't divide by n minus 1 is because these are population parameters. 
and they illustrate exactly what the variability looks like when we're calculating the variance of this distribution. So there's no need to implement a mathematical correction to inflate that value. So standard deviation, the average deviation between scores is equal to the square root of our variance, which is equal to the square root of 4, and we get 2. So finally, standard deviation represents, on average, how much these scores in this distribution deviate from the mean of the distribution, which was calculated as 1.5. Okay, number 21. When you're asked to calculate the sum of squared deviations, the variance and standard deviation of a sample with five scores, and we are, it is recommended that we use a definitional formula. So here's uh, another example of using the definitional formula since I've used the computational formula for the last couple of, of items. So the equation for SS using the definitional formula is just by the definition itself. SS, the sum of squared deviations, so sigma x minus the mean, and we square that. So we're going to calculate the mean deviation between every score and the mean of this distribution, square all those deviations, and take the summation. Okay, so we have our scores of 10. 4, 8, 5, and 8. And we need to calculate the mean. So the mean is equal to the sum of x over n. So we need to calculate the sum of x. So the sum of x is equal to 10 plus 4 plus 8 plus 5 plus 8. We get 35. And then replace variables, 35 divided by 5 scores, and we get a mean equal to 7. Okay, and now the next thing we need to do, and you'll note the difference of this process versus the previous process, we're going to calculate the score minus the mean, the deviation scores. So if we take 10 minus 7, we get a deviation of 3 points. 4 minus 7, negative 3. 8 minus 7, 1. 5 minus 7, negative 2. 8 minus 7, 1. And just for a moment, if we were to take the sum of x minus the mean, you should note that this always equals 0. The deviations all cancel each other out. Um, therefore, our mathematical solution, which by definition, the sum of squared deviations, requires that we take all our deviations and square them. And as a result, the summation of those deviation values that have been squared will no longer equal 0. So we square 3, we get 9, 9, 1, 4, and 1. Again, this whole process requires that we square the deviations, which if we think about the definition of variance, variance is the average of the squared deviations. So we squared all our deviations, and now we're going to take the summation. So the sum of x minus m squared. So if we take the sum of all scores that have been, um, sum of all deviation scores that have been squared, we get 24. 24. Okay, now we can calculate our variance. Variance, again, is the average of the squared deviations. The definitional formula makes more sense. It does take longer, but conceptually it should make more sense given what SS stands for, the sum of squared deviations. Given what variance stands for, the average of squared deviations. It's a little under, uh, easier to understand conceptually when we use the definitional formula opposed to the computational formula. So the variance is equal to our sum of squared deviations over n minus 1, or df, degrees of freedom. So we have 24. Right, divided by 4, and we get 6. Right, so 24 divided by 4 gives us a variance of 6. Standard deviation, right? The variance is the average of squared deviations. We want to bring it back into the original units. 
So standard deviation is equal to our variance, the square root of our variance. So the square root of 6 is equal to 2 point, if we round, 4, 5. Okay, so if you take 6 and take the square root, it's 2.449. We're going to round 2 digits right of the decimal, so we end up with an answer of 2.45. And again, what this represents is on average, the scores in this distribution deviate from the mean of the distribution by 2.45 points. On average, that represents the deviation between all the scores and the mean of that distribution. Okay, so here we have an example of um, actual research scenario. 23 states within a population, the differences that exist from one person to another are often called diversity. Researchers comparing cognitive skills for younger adults and older adults typically find greater differences, greater diversity in the older population. In other words, the cognitive skills of older individuals seems to be more spread out in comparison to younger adults. Following are the typical data showing problem solving scores for two groups of participants. We've got the older adults data, uh, average age 72, um, and younger um, adults. So let's calculate um, what we're asked to compute, the mean, the variance, and standard deviation for each group. So the data of each sample represents um, how many items or uh, problems were solved, the scores that they received on this particular assessment um, that is measuring cognitive skills. So let's um, organize our data. I'm going to do this horizontally just because there are so many data points, 15 in fact. So Let's just note that, that n1 is equal to, we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15, and n2 is equal to 15. Okay, and then I'm going to write all my x values, 9, 4, 7, 3, 8, 6, 2, 8, Four, five, seven, five, two, six, and six. So I don't need all of this over here. Okay, um, I've written it in that format simply because I want to use the computational formula. But first, let's calculate the mean. So the mean again. We're we're talking about um, sample one. I'm going to do sample two on the next page. So the mean, the mean is equal to the sum of x over n. We know what n equals for our first sample is 15. So let's take the sum of x values. So if we sum up all 15 values um, of our distribution, we should get 82. Okay, so again, I'm taking the sum of all of these data points here just as I've written them out here. Let me just confirm that I have all 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Always a good thing to do. Make sure that you've accounted for all of the data points. Um, so this is 82 here. 82. 82 divided by 15 gives me a mean equal to 5.47. Okay, now we're going to calculate the variance and the standard deviation. So I'm going to use the computational formula of SS, which states we'll take the sum of all oops, the sum of all x values squared minus the sum of x squared over, and again we're working with sample n. Let's replace variables. So I know what the sum of x is equal to. I got that from my calculation of the mean. So that's 82. And I'm going to square that. And my sample size is equal to 15. So what I need to do now is 
take all my x values and square them. So this is, becomes 81, 16, 49, 9, 64, 36, 4, 64, 16, 25, 49, 25, 4, 36, and 36. Okay, so now we need to take the sum of all x values that have been squared. So I'll give you a second, but we're adding up 81 all the way to 36. So all scores that have been squared. So if we take the summation of the, those values, we should get 514. 514. So let's replace that variable here. So if we take... Um, 82 and we square it. 82 squared divided by 15 gives us, sorry, 82 squared divided by 15 okay, so 514 minus 448.2666 six, six. we'll round at the end um, so if we take 514 and subtract 448.2666, we get, and now we can round, 65.73. So that's the sum of squared deviations. We can use that value to calculate our variance. Our variance is equal to SS over N minus 1, or degrees of freedom. SS is equal to 65.73 over N minus 1, which would be 14. 14. So we divide that value by 14 and we get 4.6952385 and to calculate the standard deviation I'm going to take the square root of that value, the square root of my variance. So square root of that value 4.6952385 gives me standard deviation equal to one, excuse me, 2.17. So at the very end we can round. It's always best to wait to round to the very end to get a more accurate answer. For our purposes, if you ran prior, your answers should be fairly close, um, and most likely you will be okay. Again, if you want a more accurate answer, wait to round to the very end. So we have calculated the standard deviation. So on average, the older adults, right, their average score was equal to 5.47. That was their average score. And the standard deviation represents that on average, these 15 individuals deviate from that mean by 2.17 points. Next, we're going to calculate the uh, statistics for the younger adults and see if there is a big difference. So is there a difference between the mean and then also, just as the researchers had originally predicted, is the spread of scores mm -hmm. less for the younger adults in comparison to the older adults? Okay, finally, um, the second part of this problem um, asks that we calculate the mean and standard deviation for the younger adults. Again, the <clears throat> prediction was that the older adults would have greater variability, score less, and have greater variability in comparison to the younger adults. So I'm going to set it up um, in the same manner that I did with the previous example. So I have my x values of 7, 9, 6, 7, 8, 6, 7, 6, 6, 8, 
nine, seven, eight, six, and nine. So again, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen scores to make sure no one was left out. Next, I'm going to calculate the mean. The mean is equal to sum of x over n. Sum of x, I will calculate n is equal to 15. So if we consider the sum of all x values, we should get 109, 109. 109 divided by 15, the mean is equal to 7.27. So on average, the younger adults scored 7.27 um, in comparison to the older adults. Their average was 5.47. So they did score higher. Now we're going to calculate the sum of squared deviations um, to lead us to the standard deviation using the computational formula. Sum of scores squared minus the sum of scores squared over n. I'm going to replace variables. SS is equal to, I know from my mean calculation, the sum of x is equal to 109. 109 and n is equal to 15. So now I need to calculate all my x values that have been um, squared or square all my x values and take the summation. So we get 49, 81, 36, 49, 64, 36, 49, 36, 36, 64, 81, 49, 64, 36, and 81. So I'll take, give you a second. Um, take the sum of all scores that have been squared. So 49, 81, 36, all the way to 81. So the summation of all of these values, we should get a value of 811. 811. Okay, so we replace that variable. And now we see that it I forgot something here. Um, again, it's the sum of all x values squared. Don't forget that. So 109 squared divided by 15. So we got um, 811 minus what this second part is equal to is 792.0666. Six. Okay, again, given your the differences in, in calculation um, calculator displays, yours may be longer and carried out further. Um, again, it's best to round at the very end. Um, this is as far out as my calculator carries this answer. All right, so if we do that subtraction, we get 18.93. And again, um, what we've calculated here is the sum of squared deviations. That leads us into the variance, right? We want the average of the squared deviation. So we're going to take SS over N minus 1. So we have 18.93334 over N minus 1, which is equal to 14. And this will give our variance. We get an answer of one point. Another long one, three, five, two, three, eight, one, four. So again, th this data is coming from actual research, so it does get messy, and we recognize that we're not always going to have pretty uh, examples of calculating variance and standard deviation. They aren't always going to be whole numbers. So here's um, calculation of variance. It represents the average of the squared mean deviations. And then finally, we want to bring that back into its original unit. So we take the square root of our variance, the square root of 1.35238148. Uh, 
is equal to, and at this point we can round, 1.16. So again, the mean of the distribution was equal to 7.27, which was higher, for, that's for the younger adults, which is higher than the older adults, which was 5.47. And the variability is much less. Um, in this case, the variability is 1.16. So we're saying on average, right, the scores here, these scores deviate from the mean, the mean by 1.16 points. So um, in answering B, is one group of scores noticeably more variable or more diverse than the other? So yes, we would conclude that the Older adults that had a standard deviation equal to 2.17 show that there's greater diversity in the scores than in the case of the younger adults. And if we come back and assess these scores, again, we see really low scores and we see high scores. There seems to be a greater spread, greater variability. Whereas here with the younger adults, things look to be more consistent and, of course, closer to the mean of that distribution, which happened to be 7.27.